من الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, This is section uh, 4.4 This is the last part Last time we talked about the logarithmic equations and we mentioned one method to solve logarithmic equations that uh, to use this fact to change the logarithmic equations into exponential equation and solve it. Uh, and this happens when you can express the equation in this form. If you, if you concentrate here, you have logarithmic expression in the left-hand side and the number in the right-hand side. So you have logarithmic in one side, logarithmic expression, and the number in the other side. Look here, look one side, number in the other side. Even we studied examples. If you have more than one log in one side, like here, but you still have a number in the other side. So you can write, uh, condense these two logs. You can write them as a single logarithm. And again, you have log in one side and the number in the other side. So this is the first method, okay? Uh, what about now if you don't have a number in the other side? Uh, so we will use the one-to-one -one property of logarithms to solve logarithmic equations. Uh, you need to understand these steps. So some logarithmic equations can be expressed in this form. Here you have log in the left hand side and you have log in the right hand side. So if you have log m equals log n to the same base, please pay attention that you have the same base here so you can just write it m equals to n. And this is because uh, the logarithmic function is one to one. <clears throat> so the steps would be, the first step is to express the equation in this form. If it is not written in this form, you write it in this form. Then you have m equals to n, and then you solve, and then you check your answer. So three and four similar to three and four in the previous objective let us take one example here you have len minus len equals len so you have logarithmic expressions in the left hand side and logarithmic expression in the right hand side but it is not written uh, like here log equals log because you have two lens two ln two expressions in the left hand side so you should start by writing these two as a single logarithm. You can do that using the quotient rule. Len minus len would be len x plus two over four x plus three. And now you have this form, log m equals log n. So you can write as m equals n. So you cancel the len and you have x plus two over four x plus three equals one over x. That's it. <clears throat> how to continue? You should know how to continue because this is what we studied in 001. But it is uh, uh, easy to, it is uh, if you multiply cross product, okay? You don't have to do this step. If you want to do this step, it's okay. But you can immediately cross product. So if you cross product, you have x times x plus two equals one times four x plus three. Okay, so no need to do this step. If you want to do it, it's okay. And you continue, you expand x squared plus two x equals four x plus three. It's a quadratic equation. So you bring each, all the terms to the left-hand side and you make the right-hand side zero and then you factor and then you have two solutions and then you check these solutions. Uh, check three in the original equation. This is the original equation. You replace x by three. I think it will work, no problem with the three. But if you uh, replace x by negative one, then this one will not work because len one over negative one, len negative one, well, len negative one is not defined. The negative one is not a solution. 
So the only solution is three. Let us solve this example. I have one len, one uh, logarithmic function in the left hand side. Now in the right hand side, I have two. So I will write them as a single logarithm using the quotient rule. I will have len 7x minus 23 over x plus 1. And now using the one to one property, I can write x minus 3 equals 7x minus 23 over x plus 1. Now cross product x minus 3 times x minus 1 plus 1 equals 7x minus 23. So x square, if you expand, minus 3x plus x would be minus 2x, negative 3 plus 1, negative 3, minus 7x plus 23, you bring everything to the left-hand side, so you have a quadratic equation, x squared minus 9x, negative 3 plus 23 plus 20, now you try to factor, I search for two numbers, their product is plus 20, positive 20, and their sum is negative 9, uh, 4 and 5, negative 4 and negative 5, negative 4 times negative 5 plus 20, negative 4 plus negative 5 is negative 9, so either x is 4 or x is 5. Now if you check here in the original equation, 4 minus 3 is okay, 4 times 7, 28 minus 23 is okay, 4 plus 1 is okay, 5 minus 3 is okay, 35. It seems that uh, we have no problem, both 4 and 5, but I have to check if the left-hand side equals to the right-hand side. So I will check for, for first the answer 4. So it would be len 4 minus 3, which is len 1, equals len 7 times 4, 28 minus 23, that's 5, minus len x plus 1, that's 4 plus 1, which is len 5. Now, len 1 is 0, len 5 minus len 5 is 0, so 0 equals to 0, so 4 is correct. Let me check 5, I will have len 2, because 5 minus 3 is 2, equals len. 5 times 7, 35, minus 23, that's 12, okay, minus len, 5 plus 1, that's 6, okay. Uh, so I have len 2 equals, this is by quotient rule, you can write it len 12 over 6, and 12 over 6 is 2, so this is really correct. So both answers are correct here, and that's very nice. I think this is the first example we see that both answers are correct. So it's not necessarily and one answer is not correct and the other one is correct. You could have both answers correct like in this example. Uh, I leave this question for you, okay? You can write this as a single logarithm and do exactly the same. And this would be the answer. Check that the answer is 2 over 9. Let us solve uh, these questions from the exercises. I have one log in the left-hand side. So keep it as it is, log x plus 4. I have two logs in the right-hand side, so I need to write them as a single logarithm. I have addition plus, so using the formula, we can change it to multiplication using the product rule. So it would be log 4x. And now you remove the log. So x plus 4 would be equal to 4x. This is a first degree linear equation. It's not difficult. If you take x to the other side, it would be uh, 3x equals to 4, and then x equals 4 over 3. And you can check your answer. Please check 
that 4 over 3 is a solution in the original equation. And then you find out that the solution set is 4 over 3. I have no problem with 4 over 3 because uh, it will make this one positive, this one positive. So it, it will be it will be fine. But you have to check. You have to show your checking to uh, to the teacher, to the instructor. Okay. Here I have one log here and one log here. But the problem is I have two log x. If you remember, you have to memorize really the steps. If you look carefully here, you have if log m equals log n. See, log m equals log n. So there are no numbers before the logs, no numbers. Here I have two before the log. What can I do? I cannot use the formula. And you cannot say that x equals 25. It's not true. You have to get rid of this two. So you can use the power rule to bring x, to bring the two up. So you will have log x squared equals log 25. And now you can get rid of right. logs and you have x squared equals 25. If you remember in 0, 0, 001, the solution of this equation would be x equals plus or minus square root of 25, which is a plus or minus 5. So there are two solutions, plus or minus. Of course, negative 5 is rejected. And the reason here, the reason is not because it's negative. We don't reject the negative unless we have a problem with this one because it is rejected here because it will make what is what is inside log, it will make it negative. So log negative 5 is not defined. And that's why uh, negative 5 is not accepted. So the only solution is five and you can check that five is really a correct solution Two log five is equals to log 25. Uh, another example you can here immediately write the left hand side as log x plus four over two using the quotient rule equals log five x plus one and then you have x plus four equals over two equals 5x plus 1, and you cross product and continue like what we did in the previous examples. Here you have plus, so you will change using the product formula. You will have x minus 4 times x plus 1. This is the product rule, okay, equals len x minus 8. Now you have one log in the left hand side, one log in the right hand side so you can remove them and you can expand also so you will have x square minus 4x plus 1x yani minus 3x minus 4 equals x minus 8 this is a second degree equation you bring everything to the right to the left hand side negative 3x minus x would be negative 4x negative 4 plus 8 would be plus four and uh, you factor this in fact uh, now if you factor this uh, you will find that x uh, minus two to the power two equals to zero uh, if you because if you know the formula if you remember that a minus b to the power two is a square minus two a b plus b square, if we call these three terms perfect square because they are in this form. If you look carefully here, you will find these three terms are written in this form. You have something square, which is x here. So x would be in the beginning, the first term. And you have four, which is something square. You can find its root, square root of four is two. You write it here. And you should have in the middle negative two a b. So if a is x, b is 2. If you multiply them, you have 2x with negative 2. You get negative 4x. So these three terms will give you a perfect square like this. And now you continue because the right hand side is 0. x minus 2 square equals to 0 means x minus 2 is 0. 
hence x is 2. And you can check that 2 is a correct answer. In fact, 2 is not a good answer. It is not accepted because len 2 minus 4 is not defined because it would be len negative 2. So it is not defined. So the solution set in this case is phi. So that's also a nice question. So there is no solution. The only solution that we have is 2, and 2 is not accepted as a solution because when we check it, it will make the first len and also the last len here not defined. So there is no solution, which means if you ever try to replace x by any number, this equation will not be true for any real number. So it has no solution. Uh, this equation, we write the left-hand side as one len, one logarithm by using the quotient rule. Also the right-hand side, we can write it as a single logarithm using also the quotient rule. So we will have x minus 2 over x plus 3 equals x minus 1 over x plus 7. Now we do cross multiplication and expand at the same time. So I will have x squared, this is x minus 2 times x plus 7. I will have x squared plus 5x minus 14 equals. If you multiply x minus 1 times x plus 3, you will have x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now you can cancel x squared with x squared because both are positive. And if you take 2x to the other side, you will have 3x. And if you bring negative 14 to the other side, it would be 14 minus 3, which is 11. So x would be 11 over 3. Okay. Now let us check that this answer is correct. So I will have len. If you subtract 11 over 3 minus 2, you get 5 over 3. So I have len 5 over 3 minus len. If you add 11 over 3 plus 3, you will have 20 over 3. This should be equal to 11 over 3 minus 1. It would be 8 over 3. 11 over 3 plus 7. It would be 32 over 3. Okay. Uh, you can, if you like, you can use uh, the quotient rule to write the left-hand side as a single logarithm. So you have 5 over 3 divided by 20 over 3. If you divide in the calculator, 5 over 3 divided by 20 over 3, you will find the answer 1 over 4. And if you divide 8 over 3 divided by 32 over 3 using the calculator, you will find also 1 over 4. So ln 1 over 4 equals ln 1 over 4. So this solution is correct. The solution is 11 over 3. Well, there is another objective, which is objective uh, 5, and it is about uh, applications, applied problems. How to solve applied problems in involving exponential and logarithmic equations. The first example is about alcohol and risk of a car accident. Medical research indicates that the risk of having a car accident increases exponentially. Okay, so the risk of having a car accident increases exponentially. That means it follows an exponential function as the concentration of alcohol in the blood increases. The risk is modeled by. So R, what is R? Is the risk. Okay. 
R is the risk. R given as a percent is a risk of having a car accident. While X is the blood alcohol concentration. So there are two variables in this equation. X is the blood alcohol concentration and R is the risk in percent, as a percent. Okay, and this is the equation that uh, yani, uh, model uh, this case relates. It also relates these two variables together. Okay, the question, what blood alcohol concentration? So which variable is blood alcohol concentration? It is X. X is blood. So he's asking what X? Uh, he's asking about X. Okay, to find X, he has to give me R. Corresponds to a 17% risk. Okay, risk is R. So he said that R is 17 as a percent. So you forget about the percent. Take it 17 of a car accident. How is this shown on a graph? Okay, so R is 17. And solve for X. The question, find X. So you replace R here in, the, in this equation. You replace it by 17. And now you need to solve this exponential equation. Okay. We learned in this section how to solve exponential equations. If you remember, we said uh, there, there should be no num number here. So you have to divide by 6 first. And then we said apply len to both sides. If you apply len to both sides, len cancels E, and you will have 12.77. X, then you divide by 12.77, and that would be the answer. So the, the blood alcohol concentration 0 0.08, if the blood alcohol concentration is 0 0.08, the risk of having a car accident would be 17%. We can use uh, uh, another, uh, the same question, and uh, checkpoint nine about the same question. Use formula in example nine, which is this example, the same formula, to answer the question. What blood alcohol concentration? So he's asking again about X. What X corresponds to a 7% risk? So R is seven, and we need to solve it for X. Uh, in many states, drivers under the age of 21 can lose their license for driving at this level, which is uh, 7%. But it is exactly what we did in the example. You just replace uh, R by seven and you solve for X. So it would be the same answer exactly, okay? You just replace 17 by seven and you get the value of X. Another application, we have seen that the percentage of adult height attained by a boy who is X years old can be modeled by. So X is the age of the boy, okay? Years old, so it's the age of the boy. And the percentage of adult height attained is F of X, okay? So X, boy's age from five to 15, F of X, the percentage of his adult, height. So if you replace x by 5, you will know how. what is the percentage of adult height he attained uh, at the age of, of 5. The question, at what age? Okay, what is the age? x, boy's age. So he is asking about x. At what age? Yani what is x? Round it to the nearest year. So after solving for X, you round it to the nearest year. Has a boy attained 80% of this adult height? So 85%, sorry, that's F of X. So he's saying if F of X equals 85, okay, because F of X is the percentage. So 85 would be equal to, this is the equation. So you just replace f of x by 85 and solve the equation for x. This is a logarithmic equation. Uh, we, we studied in objective three. To solve this logarithmic equation, you have to keep the logarithm alone in one side 
one goal is to isolate the log. So you have to take 29 to the other side, you get 56. And then you have to divide by 48.8, so you get this equation. Now the log is isolated, okay? So you can use the formula. Remember that uh, the base is 10. So if you change it to exponential form, you will have x plus one equals 10 to the power 56 over 48.8. If you take one to the other side, this is the exact solution of x. If you use the calculator and round to the nearest year, the age of the boy would be 13. So that's the answer. Uh, we can, you can also try to solve this question similar. The percentage of adulthood at attained by a girl, but this is this equation for girls. X is the age of the girl, and f of x, uh, the percentage of her adult height. The question at what age has a girl, so he's asking again about x, attained 97% of her adult height. So you will replace f of x by 97, and you will solve this equation for x exactly similar to the example. You take 62 to the other side, then you divide by 35, then you change it to exponential form and you find the answer. Uh, these are, this is an exercise about this formula. This formula models the population of California, A, in millions. So A is the population of California in millions. T years after two, 2010. So T is the number of years after 2010. Okay, this should be T here. This should be T. Okay, this is T, the number of years after 2010. When will, the question, when will the population of California reach 40 million? So A, is 40 so you have 40 equals 37.3 e to the power 0 0.0095 t and you need to solve this equation for t you start by dividing both sides by 37.3 you apply the len and you make sure that the answer is 217. you will get t equals to a number Okay, you add that number to 2010 to get the answer, which is 2017. Uh, uh, finally, this is uh, there are still two questions. Okay, 103, the formula, this formula models the population. It is the same formula. Uh, this is exactly, this is exactly the same answer, the same question. But uh, uh, here, when will the population of California reaches 40 million? It is the same like this one. Let me solve part A then. What was the population of California in, in 2010? What was the population in 2010? So what is A in 2010? In 2010, what was T? He says T years after 2010. So T is the number of years after 2010. So in 2010, T was zero. If you replace T by zero, a would be 37.3 because e to the power zero is just one. So A would be 37.3 million. So this is the population of California in 2010. And part B is actually this exercise. Uh, the last question, this function models the percentage of students who could recall the important features of a classroom lecture as a function of time. So X, the number of days that have elapsed since the lecture was given. X, the number of days, and yani this lecture after four days, five days, okay, X number of days. The, the figure at the top, uh, there is a figure in the book, use this information to solve. Okay, question 117, after how many days? So he's asking about X because X is the number of days. After how many days do only have the students recall the important features of the classroom lecture? Uh, half of the students, P of X, what is P of X? Percentage of students, P 
of x percentage of students. So half of students means 50%. So you replace px by 50 and you solve the equation for x. So if you replace px by 50 and solve this logarithmic equation uh, for x, as usual, you take 95 to the other side. 50 minus 95 would be negative 45. And then you divide by negative 30. So you will have log x to the base 2 equals negative 45 over negative 30. And that's 3 over 2. So you change it to exponential form. x equals 2 to the power 3 over 2, which is 1.5. If you raise 2 to the power 1.5, the answer is 2.83, okay? So that's that's the answer. That's uh, after how many days? After 2.8 days, after 2.8 days, 50% of the students will forget about the lecture uh, which, ha which they taken before 2.8 days. Okay, I stop here. Thank you very much and I open the floor for your questions.